So I decided to go on a trip. I decided to find something that would be my, I wanted to search for my passion, something I could get involved with, something philanthropic, something grassroots, something I could really sink my teeth into and make a difference. So I went to the African continent. I went to three different countries and in many different villages, and this was the first. This is in Uganda on the border of the Congo, right on the a mountain range called the Renzori Mountain Range. It's absolutely beautiful. These steep hillsides, lush jungles, a really, really incredible place. And the most beautiful part about this part of the country is the kids. There's these kids all over the place. They're smiling and laughing, and they were chasing us on the way up to the, up to the top of the mountain where their, where their uh, village was located. And I remember asking the gentleman that I was with, I was with this guy named Zach, who was gonna who would teach me a lot about the development world because I wanted to learn as much as possible on this trip. And so I asked Zach, I said, Zach, there's, this is amazing. There's all these kids, there's like hundreds of them. Where are their parents, Zach? And he looked around and he said, well, Taylor, he said, uh, he said 70% of this village has AIDS. He said, their parents are dead. Um, and that's, that's the time that the trip went from being this kind of adventure, something I was going to be this big philanthropist is what I thought, and it turned into be the most transformational experience of my life. And it went on, I, I met, met a lot of the village elders, I uh, learned a lot about what the, the kids were going through in the village, and, and I found out that the people that have the worst in this village are the girls. Uh, because in this village, it's, not, it's, uh, it's typical for girls to get married as young as 11 or 12 years old and spend the rest of their life doing backbreaking labor and having as many babies as their husband would like. And then luckily we found a bright spot. And the next country I went to was Kenya, way out in the Masamara region of Kenya, in the Rift Valley, where, like, where the first human walked. And something really different was happening here because they were building schools, like this one. This is built by an organization called Free the Children. And the cool thing about these schools is that they're not just teaching math and science and geography and social studies. They're teaching things that, in a lot of cases, their parents aren't equipped to teach them, like finances and gender equality and family planning. And the, in the, for the girls in these schools, I don't know if you know, but every year of education that a girl receives in the developing world increases her earning potential by up to 20%. And girls that receive an education in developing countries have an average of 2.2 fewer children and get and married an average of four years later than children without, a, without an education. So it's changing things massively in the short term and the long term in these villages. So when I got back to Canada from this, I'm from the west coast of Canada, uh, if you haven't heard my accent yet, from the west coast of Canada, and, and I got back and I thought, you know, this is, all I want to do now is I want to fund one of these schoolhouses. That would make me feel so amazing to know that I funded a schoolhouse like this for, you know, like roughly 1,000 kids, because about 50 kids per year get to use these schoolhouses for well over 20 years. So about 1,000 kids would get educated in one of these schoolhouses. So I started looking at the crowdfunding industry. I started looking at, you guys have all heard of Indiegogo, Kickstarter, yeah? So I started looking at those, like, that's how I'm going to do it. I'll just ask a bunch of my friends to all give a bit of money. We'll raise $10,000, which is what it costs to build one of these schoolhouses, and we'll fund a schoolhouse. Amazing. And I started doing some really simple math in that I thought, you know, well, how much are people going to give to these campaigns? They'll probably have 20 bucks, maybe 50. And I thought, how many people do I have to get to give, let's say, $50 to raise $10,000? Anybody going to get some quick math? Be 200 people. I don't have 200 people that like me or 200 friends. So I decided that wasn't going to work. So I came up with this equation that I now believe will work in every age, race, gender, and geographic sector in the developed world. And it goes like this. 33 people give me $3.33 a day for three months adds up to $10,000. And now I'd go into this like crazy study of human behavior that I went through to come up with a way to get my 33 friends to say yes to giving $3.33 a day for three months, the price of a cup of coffee a day for three months. But I'm just going to show you it live, kind of in action, and you'll see how it works right now. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I am sending you a direct message to my closest friends because I want you to support me in building a school and raising funds. So really excited to share this with you. Please help make this happen. It's going to be successful. It's going to be the fastest campaign ever launched on Change Heroes. And it's part of the Summit community, so it's one of our friends. Make it happen. Give $3.33 a day for three months? That adds up to $10,000. That $10,000 will build an entire schoolhouse with cinder block walls, big bright windows, wood benches, and chalkboards that will educate approximately 1,000 children, all from a bunch of friends giving some pocket change.